Welcome to the 2022 Fennec Christmas Window Reveal. I'm Lauren Child and I'm delighted to introduce Clarice Bean's Think Like an Elf as this year's window. Let's take a look in the windows and see what Clarice and her family get up to. The beginning of things. One thing we all agree on in our house is that we like looking forward to Christmas. Here we have Navarino Street, home of Clarice Bean. You can see Clarice looking out of the window down at her granddad, who's chatting to his best friend Peggy, and you can see Cement the dog. <coughs> Peeking round the door are her younger brother Minel and her cousin Noah. The children are excited because it's a snowy day, but they've also spotted a poster which tells them the circus is coming to town. <coughs> Once the Christmas cards start to arrive, we know Christmas is truly coming. Here we are in the living room of the Tuesday family and you can see Clarice Bean's mother standing behind the sofa, Clarice Bean's dad next to the door, Peggy's come round and so has Betty, Clarice Bean's best, best friend. On the sofa is Marcy, Clarice Bean's older sister, her granddad, her older brother Kurt, and her younger brother, Minor Cricket. On Grandad's lap, you can see Fuzzy, the cat, and waiting patiently, staring at Peggy, hoping that he might get a treat, is Cement. Everyone's really excited, because while they've been watching television, an advert has popped up for the circus that is coming to town. I wonder if Clarice Bean and her family will be able to see it. It would make Christmas truly special. Picking the right Christmas tree is very important. Clarice Bean is talking to her dad about which tree they should choose. Can you spot Minel? You might be able to see some little yellow Wellingtons and some flapping arms. He became very excited when he saw a very large Christmas tree and decided that was the one. Now he seems to be stuck. His dad doesn't look too happy because the Christmas tree man says they're going to have to buy it whether they like it or not. Clarice Bean is finding it very hard to fall asleep when all you can think about is Christmas. But finally she does drift off and of course she dreams dreams of the circus of the big top and the strong man and the tightrope walker and the horses. There's nothing like the circus. It's going to be wonderful. I cannot believe it. The circus has been cancelled. We can see Clarice outside her house running towards her cousin Lotta and her best friend Betty Moody, who's holding the newspaper with terrible news. You can see Clarice Bean's sister and brothers feeling rather dismal. It's one of those days when you just feel utterly disappointed and you just don't know how you're ever going to feel better. Christmas just won't be Christmas without the circus. What are they going to do? Clarice Bean is lying on the floor chatting to her granny, who lives in New York, because granny always knows what to do. <laughs> Granny's advice is simple. She says, think like an elf. You could put your own circus on. Everyone could dress up. Everyone could do their own act. And that way, everyone gets to enjoy the circus after all. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. The children have practised and practised, and here they are. Clarice Bean balancing on the stool while she juggles. And you see Marcy there hula hooping, Minel in his pyjamas, which are his most circusy outfit. Cement the dog has been trained by Kurt to jump over Minel. Clarice can just about juggle, but Kurt's standing behind just in case to catch everything she drops. 
You can see the big tree all decorated, but what you can't see is the family watching, really enjoying themselves. The circus has been saved. Clarice Bean finally got exactly what she wished for, which was a really big Christmas. Not just their family, but friends, and friends who didn't have anywhere to go because their Christmas plans had been cancelled. So we see here the Moody's and Peggy, whose family weren't able to get here. Clarice Bean's cousins are here, and they'd originally thought they were going to be somewhere else, but then they couldn't get to where they were going. There's so many people sitting round, it's hard to get all the food onto the table. Even the animals are at the table. You can see the cat, Fuzzy, and you might even be able to see Cement's nose. This is what makes Christmas truly special, is sharing it with other people and people you love. I really write for myself because that's the only way I find that you can begin something and feel passionate about it. I then translate it into Clarice's voice really, so it comes through her. So she's talking out to the reader in her own voice. I wrote Think Like an Elf because of all those memories of happy family times and that generosity of spirit and I hope that you could get it inside a book. When we approached Lauren about Think Like an Elf, it actually was one of those rare moments in life where there's a synchronicity that we'd wanted to work with her for a very long time. Paul and the Phoenix team took the story and pulled out the essence that makes it work as a run of windows. And then we had our 140th anniversary this year and our story was about circuses. The circus is very special to the Fennec family because Arthur Fennec was very taken with the circus and always wanted to add the theatre of the circus experience to the store. We had this idea that we wanted to incorporate a story in which Clarice went to the circus. Lauren was so open and such a fantastic partner and she said, yes, that works. And did you know Clarice's mother was actually a circus acrobat before she became Clarice's mother? It was a very exciting way in which we could move the story and partner in our 140th circus year into Clarice Bean's Christmas. It's incredible to go from all of those phases of design, development, discussion into live. It's incredibly exciting. It's just always fascinating seeing a drawing made life-size. There's something I've always thought was quite magical about that. I'm a real collector of things. In the Clarice Bean book, you'll notice these two little Bambi-esque deers, which are actually salt and pepper shakers that I bought in New York. All of these little bits of inspiration and reference all can meet together in a book. We just want to do Lauren and her story justice and really bring Clarice to life from the book into reality. Moving it forward from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional project, it's a lot of fun. Some of the more intricate things we've worked on is taking the 2D illustrations that Lauren's created and playing around with them, having a bit of fun with the furniture and creating 2D flat cutouts into 3D furniture, which looks like an illustration as well. Seeing how careful and how true to the illustration they've been about getting even the skewed chair so that everything is at a funny angle. It looks like someone's drawn it with a very big crayon. And so it keeps that world as if it is the book that's come to life. Fennec Christmas is a multi-generational time, a time that parents and families and grandparents come together, but also for us, reading and storytelling is something that holds families together and something they do together, and that's a very important part of what we're doing today. I think story is incredibly important to all of us. It's such a sort of bedrock of who we are. We are our stories. We carry on and on, loving stories in whatever form. Books for children are so powerful and so important.